and a couple feet from that, and there were jets of water that covered the, uh, the rods that are holding the sculpture, so it looks like she's actually floating on that water. And this is called hair. It's uh, a clear urethane. And when I was working two-dimensionally and three-dimensionally, I always wondered, well, where can I go from here? What's beyond three-dimensional? So I began trying to look through the piece and, and using clear urethane like uh, M theory upstairs, that hanging horse head, you're able to look through the piece. Uh, this is my daughter, Kristen, at uh, Navy Pier in Chicago. Uh, this piece is called Purple and Blue. It's a temporary exhibition for uh, uh, something called Pier Walk, and they had Art Chicago going on at the, at the pier at the time. This piece here is called Wall Rabbit, and it's raw, raw cardboard. Uh, this idea came about because when, when I work late for two, three days without sleeping, I began to see things. <laughs> and it moves across the room, and I actually thought I saw a rabbit fall down. I thought, well, geez, why am I not doing those? Uh, this piece was sold to uh, a good friend of ours. He's a designer, probably one of the top guys in, in the country. And if you enter his condominium, there are two red 12-foot doors that open up. And then there's a, a marble and wood um, walnut foyer. There's a dome ceiling with a crystal chandelier and crystal sconces on each side. And there's, there's cardboard sculpture in the middle. Uh, I sold it. Um, and on a Thursday, I got a call from his partner that uh, uh, they had installed an architectural digest, just photographed it for a cover. And that was a Thursday afternoon. By Thursday evening, they were both dead. So it went down in a plane crash. They had uh, a summer home um, in the northern part of Wisconsin that they would fly to for a weekend home, I guess. Uh, so it was very sad. And then the two families of the two partners have been in court now for three years. Um, so they've got the sculpture. Um, and I just got an email from my, uh, my lawyer saying that the uh, court case had been settled, but um, I haven't been paid for three years. So. Uh, this piece is called Horizontal and Vertical. And again, it's the idea of uh, leaving the earth, of not being tangent. So something as heavy as bronze uh, could float. So that, that was my goal in this. This is a, an early piece uh, called Evan. For the hair I used uh, French curves, which probably very few students use anymore. It's not done on the computer. Uh, very flat. Very two-dimensional. Uh, there'll be a series of, of my uh, cardboard and, and bondo pieces that are the piece elevation triptych that's upstairs. Um, this particular horse figure in, in the center has no head. And that's because if you look at a large necked animal or a long necked animal, at some point, in time, the head will disappear as it turns away from you, and all you'll see is this neck. This is another, there'll be all a series of these, but this is all elevation cryptic. Um, all the uh, fins, which you'll see a lot in the horse pieces, uh, are representing movement when we would ride horses in the ocean, there was this constant movement, and I wondered how you would do that in sculpture without trying to change my style or use some, some thought process somebody else has done. So I just made a lot of these fins, which look wonderful, but are really a pain in the neck for the metal furniture. <laughs> 
This is that centerpiece that has no head. It's kind of morphed into a bird form. Um, in, in elevation cryptic, each limb is cast separately. And then it's fabricated back together. So that piece upstairs that has three figures, elevation cryptic, actually is 12 separate castings. And that makes it, of course, very heavy and very expensive to, to produce the work. But, so instead of having two sides, uh, something like this will actually have six separate sides. And it allows you to look deep inside the work and actually completely through it. You can see again the, the side of the horse is actually floating. And this piece, like some of the others in the show, don't have legs. And that, that's because when you ride in the ocean, the legs are gone. They're underwater. So that's... Horses swim just like big dogs. And this is a piece of that photograph by Mel. And Patina by Dale. By the way, these, these bases here, I, I don't have them upstairs. These, uh, they were, uh, were remodeling the Palmer House in Chicago. And they, they cut out these holes in this uh, absolute black granite for the sinks. They said, gee, what are you going to do with those? So that, that's where these came from. Uh, this is Small Narrow Horse. Uh, has an ochre patina. It uh, also has a uh, liver patina. I do an addition of eight in a pedestal sized piece. So if you were to take a figure like this, or purple and blue piece by Navy Pier Andes, and, and flatten them out, they would just be flat two dimensional pieces that have been uh, rendered three dimensionally. And simply by introducing the curve, it changes the form completely. This is the uh, Deliver between these. And this is the larger piece. Uh, I flopped the image of the horse and turned it slightly. This piece here is called the Tomorrow Horse, and it was because of an exhibition in Tomorrow, Japan. Uh, they had a requirement, a size requirement of, I don't know exactly what it was, but that's the size that I made this particular piece. And this is cast in the urethane. If you notice, one of the limbs is missing, and I don't know when the photo will come out, but I'll tell you what that's all about. There it is. <laughs> uh, a few years ago, I had to have my legs cut off and reattached. Uh, it was from an earlier accident that I had and all the cartilage in the middle was gone so they, they they cut off my legs and then they put them back together with this metal and took the metal out and now they're I wouldn't say they're fine but I can walk. Now I interesting is that uh, you have Chuck Close coming up for an exhibition and um, I had my operation on December 7th and when I got out of the hospital I had a wife and two daughters waiting for me and Chuck Close had his event, as he calls it, on December 7th. And when he got out of the hospital, he also had a, a wife and two daughters waiting for him. Uh, that same piece, Tomorrow Horse, uh, was sold to uh, the city of Ravinia. Ravinia is part of Highland Park, Illinois. It's like the summer home for the Chicago Symphony. That's a little train station in the background. This is the, the dedication, and this is called the Large Narrow Horse. This is the Narrow Horses, too. Uh, again, like Elevation and Triptych, this has individual pieces that are cast and then fabricated back. To the, to the sculpture. So the torso is completely independent of the legs and you can look through the legs. Uh, you can see these very deep pockets that with a, a traditional form of casting you would be able to achieve. This is the, the same 
Petey Snare horses too, but uh, I did this in urethane. It's glazed, it's not, not painted. There are many, many layers to get uh, depth to the, uh, to the colors. Uh, this is S Horse 1. It's a piece upstairs. Again, this is one of the horses that are swimming. There's a little photograph of me on the uh, wall upstairs that shows me on one of the horses riding. Um, by the way, this is my wife here, Susan, and she is really the rider. So I, have to do it. So I just kind of sit on the animal and go along for the ride. So she actually rides. Uh, this is S Horse 2. Again, I'm trying to show more movement and what's taking place. Uh, it's great fun for some of the horses that, that really like to go in the ocean because where we are is generally very hot, over 100, and we give a horse a break like going in water. Uh, they, they love it. This is Susan 1, and it's my wife riding. Um, if you look at the piece upstairs, you can actually see the one leg that's missing is inside of the horse. And my, my feeling about her riding is that she was part of the part of the whole process of riding. She felt at ease. She had a, a long scarf on at the time, but I trailed her one arm that way rather than the scarf. Uh, again, dimension is what's my what my work is really all about. So if I'm doing something two dimensional three-dimensional, I'm always saying, well, where else can I go? And for me, it was viewing the subject matter from a different angle. I can look through this piece, I can look underneath this piece, I can look above this piece, uh, and not just around it. Uh, the shadows on the, uh, the pedestal give me another sense of dimension, and, and it also brings in that idea of leaving the earth. This is... Uh, actually cast in urethane and uh, glazed. Another view of the same piece. This is M theory. M, M theory is short for membrane theory, which is another name for string theory. The large cardboard piece upstairs is string theory. I don't know, I assume some of you at least know what string theory is, um, but before his death, Albert Einstein was trying to come up with one theory of everything. The way uh, Newton came up with one theory that explained gravity. So he said the same force that made this apple fall from the tree to the earth is the same force that moves the moon around the earth. By, the, by saying that he united heaven and earth, in a sense. So Einstein wanted to go farther and say, I want one theory that explains everything there is. He died before that could happen. And after he did, scientists throughout the world took up this challenge. They came up with five different theories of everything, which makes no sense. It can't be five of them. After uh, getting together in a group and talking about it, they realized they were actually saying the same thing. So our universe contains 11 dimensions, including time. It's very complicated because a lot of the ideas contradict themselves. Uh, in this piece, there are 11 figures that represent the 11 dimensions. 